you go. Luca Nation, welcome back to episode 744. Three topics I want to discuss today. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. One, BGS PWCC partnership. Something I love, more competition. You know, SGC started a trend in my opinion, uh, and other companies are following suit. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about some of the, I think it's National Treasures release day for basketball. And there's an amazing post going around where for Jalen Green, they put a, a sweater in his colossal card. Two, and number three, a little personal, a little digging inside of a cage. Investment philosophy. Do you enjoy investing in safe assets? Joe Montana, Jordan Rice. Do you enjoy speculating? How do you bounce back when, you know, speculation doesn't go right? What do you, so a little bit of that. I think that's that's on theme for you, brother. Um, any one of those interesting to start with? How's the vibe? Somebody asked me once, do we do like warm ups before the show? Somebody asked me, like, you know, do you do any like, you know, because I mumble all the time. How yeah. do you prevent yourself from mumbling? Uh, so so you know, there's a great clip. You guys can go to Jay Williams on Instagram. He's a mumbler. I'm a mumbler too. Guys with like really strong bodies, huge arms, and big necks. Like me, are mumblers typically. And as a result, he worked with a voice coach and to avoid mumbling and activate the core, put his two fingers in his mouth on, on your wisdom teeth and then go. Ah, ah. So all you audio listeners, you can't see, but you can. <laughs> I did a good job describing what that looks like. I apologize for the sound. Activates the core. And you could even tell I'm more confident. My posture is better. I speak better just after that little exercise. So. All you public speakers out there, feel free to use um, use that tip. We I love it. Value in a million different. Ways, <laughs> I, 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 you are a very good sport. We're in a recession cage. I need to dig into the deepest crevices to add value to our community. I will not rest until every single audience member is winning. I like that. I mean, I hope you're not digging in their crevices because some of our audience members probably wouldn't like that. I but, will do it. I'm not scared. Your, I will do whatever it takes. Of your three topics. I see. watched Rise. And what was so impressed me about that topic. movie was, okay, now we see Giannis's success. $100 million contract. But to see how that – one line that really stuck out to me with the family, and, and the parents really deserve so much credit, man. Uh, when one person scores – the whole team scores. And that applies to family. That applies to community. But I love that motto. When one person scores, the whole team scores. All right. Uh, We're kidding. all scoring. So let's <laughs> let's do some scoring today in this episode here. I mean, it's uh, it's fun stuff. You you got some topics. I have a topic for you. Tell me. Because you start you talk about the recession and all that fun stuff. We can talk about National Treasure releasing, that's great. Probably, you know, maybe one of the thousand people who are going to listen to this in the first 24 hours will have a chance to actually open a box. Maybe people will get into breaks. Who knows? National Treasure is an interesting product. Not exactly cheap. Um, so that's one fun one. And we got some other ones. Here, here's my topic for you, right? So the vibe. We could talk about investing and stuff like that. Most people don't care about, quote, unquote, investing. Here's my topic for you. The, the the market's not doing as great as it was last year. The market's not doing what everybody wanted it to be. You tell me how it is that even in the market conditions the way they are, that you find yourself having more fun in the hobby now than maybe you've ever had before. Because that's something you told me. You told me that right now you're actually having more fun in the hobby. How is that possible? I go on Twitter and I see people saying there, you know, hey, this, this, and this. This used to be worth this. This used to be worth this. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving the hobby. You get a lot of well, okay. I'm leaving the hobby posts. So tell me, how are you having more fun when, when... – Well, let's start with the foundation. Uh, um, I got lucky. I'll start with the lucky part. I did get an opportunity to sell some of my NFTs and riskier stuff in February and January. So I don't have all that like feeling of, oh, I just got pummeled by the market, right? Because – I'll tell you, I think we've all been through gut shots in our life, whatever that looks like, losing a job, losing a lot of money, you know, 
buying into an investment, whether it's a real estate property or whatever it is, and thinking it's going to go up and then making dreams of like, once this hits this number, I'm going to do X. We love that. Yeah. And then getting gut punch. Oh, it's when your expectations and reality are so far away, you feel, oh, get gut punch. So I, I maybe avoided that this time, maybe. Um, but I'm also, when I get those gut punches, I don't, I'm not a victim mentality. I, I, I don't know when I broke out of that. I know at parts of my life, I probably had it. But at this current stage, I'm like, if I got myself into it, I can get myself out, out of it, right? Mm -hmm. I take sole responsibility. And then once you do that, it's a little bit of a process. And then you're like, what's the smallest step I could take moving forward? So mine was, well, let's go back to the basics. You've always been good at finding things that are underpriced relative to the current market, buying them and selling them. I did that getting into the hobby with Mercari. Mercari, yes, I said it in February 2020, January 2020. That's where I bought my Zion cards originally. And now with PWCC Weekly, I know it might be short-lived. I could be forever, but I, I think it's short-lived. There was an influx of supply. So I spent those long nights and weekends putting on a movie, but not really watching a movie and scrolling PWCC's app countless, countless, countless hours. And I got to see so many different cool cards. And I'm like, the hobby's not dead. These, there's a ton of expensive cards, first off. There's a ton of them. But then there's also such cool cards that now I can get at affordable prices. And here's the kicker. I found a mentor and a great friend, or maybe God found him for me and you. And I have someone to bounce ideas off of. So that's equally as important. Like in a little bit of this downturn, I have you. I mean, bounce ideas off each other. What if this works? What if this works? Hey, I did this, but it didn't work out. I did this, but it did work out. What can we learn from it? You're not a collector. Shut the fuck up. You're awesome. <laughs> hey, show me how you warm up. Uh, you know, like that kind of stuff. The whole deal. So I'm I mean, listen, sometimes I drink more coffee. Sometimes when the market takes a turn and it's not as easy, you know, and there's more of a grind to it, sometimes people enjoy the grind, right? It's, um, you know, I, I've said it a couple times, right? Like life is what happens when you're making plans for your life. I've also heard like, you know, life is the journey, not the destination, right? That doesn't just have to be life. It could be the hobby, right? And, and if we start thinking more that the hobby is about the hobby journey more than the hobby destination, sure, it's I want to make a million dollars. I want to buy this and sell this. I want to flip my way into this, this, and this. And we had a lot of talk about that. Right? It was, it was, you remember the paper clip, the snowball effect, the whole deal. I'm going to turn this and I'm going to flip this and I'm going to do this and then I'm going to have this. Well, what made those videos fun, what made those content fun was the journey, the steps along the way, the what card did you buy? You know, I think people miss this sometimes. You know, when people show up at shows and they're like, hey, I'm going to buy a $50 card and by the end of this card show, I'm going to have a $500 card. People tune in for that content. They watch the videos of, of you doing that less because they're impressed about the $500 card at the end and more to watch the deals being made, the trades that happen, the buys and the sells and the, the process of getting there, right? That's the fun part of it, right? You, you, know, you don't want to miss the forest for the trees, right? It's one of those kind of things. So I think right now you know, what I'm seeing with you is – I mean, you want to call it getting back to your roots. That's fine. You know, the buy low, sell high. But you're, you're, you're taking time to kind of smell the roses. It's less about like I have $1,000 today and, and at some, somehow, some way, I'm going to buy cards. And by this day, next month, I'm going to turn that 1000 into 10000 First of all, it's not exactly the most realistic thing. And a lot of us had unrealistic expectations because of the way that the hobby was doing. Ah, I'm going to buy this in 10x in a month. You could do that last. You could do that during the hobby. And, and people actually made statements like that. Like, I'm bombing looking for things like 10x. Oh, that's only going to go up 30%? I don't want that. Well, it's money I would not say low. that's not actually my game. I'm not very good at buying low and selling high. I, I buy high and sell low. <laughs> what I've always been good at was, hey, this is too low selling over here. And over here, I know this demo would love this card. Let me buy it here and sell it here. I've always well, been very good at that. You're selling yourself short, right? I don't want to get YouTube canceled. I asked you to play. Like, you put music. What were you playing today? What was the music you had on? 
Sade is what her name, but it's the sun Sade. in my drone. Sade. And, you know, the, yeah. How do you put it in my feels? How do you spell that? S A D E. S A D E. Sade. That's the ordinary love, right? Sing it for me. It's, it's no ordinary love. I can't sing. I know. I mean, that was I good. apologize. That was one of my favorite songs a, a long time ago when, when it came out. But I must have heard a cover of that one by uh, by Sade. But so here you go. So so um, I gotta tell you, right? So so we're having fun, dude. We're having warm up again. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you doing? Over there? <laughs> so so I mean, dude. I love Bro, I'm a trier. Like I d I've told you this before. I just try shit. Like like with that especially <laughs> stuff like in a recession. I don't know why I keep saying a recession. I'm a, I'm a trier. But I, I do, I just try shit. Like a lot of it doesn't work. People don't see the stuff that doesn't work. It doesn't even matter if it doesn't work. Just try, especially if it's low risk. Like with that, like how many people wouldn't try that technique that are podcasters? And it's low risk. There's no downside. I know it sounds stupid, but like, what's the downside? There is none. And listen, I'm going to give you some credit. So yesterday's episode was a fun one. Guys, if you haven't listened, we're getting a lot of feedback from yesterday's episode, mostly that I should lay off the drugs. Uh, but beyond <laughs> that, that, some of Andrew's ideas and stop actually watching fat baby movies. made sense. Some of Andrew's ideas, right? I mean, the, you know, I got some messages like, you know, go easy on him. He, you know, some of his ideas make some sense. I said, okay. I'll go easy out of him and some of his answers, some of his if, suggestions. If my dad sense. was here, pretend he was like the third inter he would say, Don't go take it easy on me. He would say that Andrew performs better under pressure. He says when life gets too easy and people stop putting pressure on Andrew, that's when he relaxes. Because left to my own accord, I would just lay around, put a bowl of cereal on my tummy, and watch a movie all Okay. Time. So one, he would also be mad at me for drinking during the episode. That was the feedback that I got. He hates that I do that. Second, it's a lack of professionalism. What? What? This is my shtick. I've never claimed to be professional. So, <laughs> what is the cereal, and what is the movie? That's the important stuff that the inquiring minds want to know. You're allowed to veg out the rest of the day. You. Let's just assume there's very good weed there, dude. What is the cereal? So th this week I've been a little bit more lethargic, just to be transparent. I've, I've got two great movies this week. Rise, that was a tearjerker, I'm not going to lie. But then we went with Flight with Denzel Washington. That was not as expected. I thought that was going to be like just a little darker, light movie. A little darker, right? Yeah. I mean, they hit you from the top, though, like when he's doing drugs and the girl walks in scene one. Yep. So, okay. But that was way darker than I thought. Like, movies I thought it was with, flawed, with flawed heroes are good. I like the flawed hero movies, you know? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, what's the cereal? A little Cinnamon Toast Crunch? You going like little Fruit Loops? Like, what, what do we got? Captain Crunch? I lied, actually. It's not cereal. It's yogurt to be a little healthier with girls on top. That's like a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, by the way, best cereal ever. Tell me. Cookie Crisp. Easily. Best cereal of all time. It tastes very artificial. Cereal is supposed to taste artificial. Um, you don't want it to makes, taste it makes artificial. It cereal, I mean, most cereal is not natural. I mean, you want to eat Cheerios? Ugh, who does that? The Dude, only people who actually you, eat man. Cheerios are on commercials for Cheerios. Yeah. I Kids. I'll stand by this until I die. I am loyal to the market, and I love pure competition. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. Maybe 12 months ago, we were talking about how there's grading issues in the hobby and all of this stuff. And here's how I saw it play out. SGC was like, okay, we, we got to do something about this. And they're like, all right, we could do 30-day turnaround times. Mm-hmm. Or we could do five-day turnaround times and see what's fucking good. So they're like, okay, let's do it. CSG's like, wait a second. We can do that too. Struck a partnership with PWCC. Cards are 12 bucks, back in your hands, and sold in the weekly auctions like that. DGS is like, wait a second, hold up. We're the king of the modern. We used to do this shit. Let us get in on this race. And you know who wins? Not the companies. We do. We as the people win. I love competition, man. I love when it benefits the hobby. Do you agree? Disagree? What yeah. faith do you have when you saw PWCC um, Beckett partnership? 50 bucks a card, still pricey. 
Yeah, if I could be honest. The card was, but but I believe. So here's the thing, right? I believe with that, the card is automatically then inserted into the PWCC auction. So it is it is um, it is a one stop shop for raw card liquidity. Now. You know, it's it's an interesting thing, right? Because basically what you're saying is I need to find a card that uh, for $50 is going to improve its value in a Beckett slab and I want to get rid of it, right? And, you know, there are a lot of... It's a, a gamble. Of, correct. There are a lot of interesting ways it could go, right? You do a little flow chart, right? What if it comes up with a great grade and you want to keep it? What if it comes up with a crappy grade and you don't like the grade and you don't want to sell it because you're going to get less than what it would have been raw? I mean, there's a lot of interesting little nuances to it. I haven't peeled back the layer of, you know, the layers of the, of the announcement. I will say this, right? Depending upon the type of card, one of the things that we've talked about is, you know, with when PSA was closed, like, what do you do with raw cards? Right? What what are, what are you going to do with raw cards? This does get you liquidity for your raw card. Um, I would think, though, at the $50 price point for Beckett and then selling it, it's got to be, you know, an interesting card, right? I mean, it's not going to be, you know, your your Prism base cards of, like, you know, Tyrese yeah. Halliburton, the stuff that people are sitting on the sidelines with, you know? Um, but, but, but yeah. Gage, if you, if you paid attention to the weekly auctions, you saw how the demos have broken out. So you go... CSG is getting those hoops. They're getting the illuminance. They're getting, you know, up to the $30 raw card, if we could be real. You guys know that this is not my opinion. You pay attention. You see it. So we have that. We have SGC coming in 50 to 250, 300 bucks. BGS is saying, all right, they're, that market is a little bit saturated with two grading companies dominating it. What if we go for the prism color, the optic color, maybe a national treasure, you know, play in that demo so and i don't know who went out maybe sgc will still win out because they get the same resale value for 25 bucks a card right i mean i'm with you i understand exactly what you're saying and that that layer is interesting right because you know if it's a quick enough turnaround to liquidity at 50 dollars, it's a, it is a a a lane for beckett with their PWCC partnership to operate in and navigate that they can become the people, right? A, car, a raw card that's a $200 raw card, a $300, $400, $5 raw card. You pay 50 bucks for that to get it graded and get liquidity on it. Sure. Um, I mean, I think that's actually a very good analysis, right? Because that same card you could send to PSA, but it, at $18 per card right now for just the this, this special, I think they put what like a hundred and ninety nine dollar cap on it, right? And the mm -hmm. rest of the stuff that's I think thirty dollars a card, which is better than fifty. I think they basically are saying that they're not looking at those until the backlog's done. So, you know, your card will be sold in the weekly auction at PWCC months before the cards even looked at at the same price point or a similar price point at PSA. So, it definitely is an interesting strategy. I will say, obviously, you know, PWCC. We do a, a show about their weekly uh, auctions. Um, you know, maybe we'll talk to those guys and get some more details about this as well. Maybe we'll, we'll see it probably live at the national. I think they're going to be taking in cards there, probably raw cards, to do this. Um, you know, with their partnership here with Beckett. Um, okay, be do you know what I think about? Sure. So, sure. I'm, I'm, a, I believe in symbiotic relationships, mm -hmm. and I think we could point to the NBA, who I think does it the best. Right. So what happened with the hobby when that one of the chick, there was like a chick in the armor and then it broke when grading closed down, that entire ecosystem stopped. Right. What we need is this like well-oiled machine where pe breakers rip cards, people who get those cards, get them graded. They have a few options at grading companies and they get to choose. This one's a little bit more expensive. It's faster. This one's less expensive, a little slower. They get options. They get their cards graded. Now, can they sell those cards and get liquidity out? Now, those cards either go to collectors or investors, someone who's holding it long term, someone who's holding it short term, someone who's flipping it. And then you have that cycle and it's complete. What I saw in 2021 was that cycle got cut off when all of the grading companies shut down and it hurt everybody. 
we look at the NBA and we see these huge valuations. Well, they've been a well-oiled machine. The players are winning. The owners are winning. The fans are winning. They have symbiotic relationships with retailers where there's distribution. They have uh, licensing rights with Topshop, Panini. So you you want this well-oiled machine. And I think having a lot of grading companies in the space that are respected, having liquidity through dish, for, through Golden and PWCC and other marketplaces, I think it's healthy. I think it's so good for the hobby. Just get that money flowing. Uh, listen, I think it continues a trend of all in one, something you've been talking about for a while, right? What people I think we're hoping for from fanatics, right? It's 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 consolidation in the hobby, right? And now you have a partnership where you could take a raw card and just in one shot, not only does it get graded, but it also gets auctioned off. But you're 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 taking a raw card and sending it through two steps in one for liquidity. Um, it would be nice if you could keep some in your vault and keep an auction off some others. I think that's a better use case, and I think they'll get to that. I don't think that's that crazy of an ask. Put these in my vault, put these or and auction these. Like that's and then from your vault you could ship it out. You could do a whole million other things. I mean, I get it. I understand. Um, you know, hey, here's a fifty card sub, it's in the vault. You have yeah. to click now, keep it or sell it. You have twenty four hours, boom, click this one vaulting click this one selling yeah i mean i get get it they definitely have the tech for it um you know their tech is like no one else's they've Uh, been building it for a while they they really have and it takes a lot like it's not it's not an overnight thing like everyone there's that whole lameen post where it's like everyone gets a vault but cage you bought on you bought a pwcc you paid for that duncan right that shit goes in your vault instantly immediately think about and and there's no mess ups and if they are, the customer service team takes care of it. And if you want these cards shipped out, they're fulfilled in 24 to 48 hours. All of that is is incredible. Like, think about this week. PWCC is probably getting tons of requests to ship the cards that people want from weekly mm-hmm. home or people taking cards from their vault to weekly, to national. That's a whole process. So, And they haven't skipped a beat. I'm getting my cards tomorrow, and I paid yesterday. So... Let's go. That's amazing. Let's take it up a notch. Let's take it up a notch. I mean, listen, the, the, the key there is, you know, it's it's a strategic partnership, and it makes sense for all parties. It makes sense for Beckett to try to get, you know, come up with that lane. It makes sense for PWCC because, you know, these are raw cards that are not being sold, that are now, you know, easier to sell in their auction, you know, now that they're slab VGS, and it's a one-stop shop for people. And I think the, the message there is – that you're trying to put down is it's good for everyone. It's good for the consumer to have, you know, auction houses doing this stuff, partnering up, you know, and, and pushing the envelope. And if it works great, if it doesn't work, there'll be something else that happens that, you know, that, that people will utilize, you know, that, that that's comparable, you know, Cage, it's one of the issues that card manufacturers haven't had. They haven't had any competition. Who else makes basketball cards the last 10 years? Think about that. Think about if you go back to 2012 and look at the amazing sets that Panini was was coming out with. Mm-hmm. 2012, 2013, 2014. The designs, you have brilliance, you have clutch, uh, you have the prism set. You have these gorgeous designs very thought out. Now, you even said it. They're just pumping out these clearly done risks. Look at the National Treasures. The most expensive product that Panini has, they put a holiday sweater in it. That was like sticking out of the card. Like, think about, think about the, being the person that was asked to go get that. Like, hey, go to TJ Maxx, go to the clearance section, and let's see what kind of sweater we could put into Jalen Green's thing. Like, it doesn't even make any sense. Not associated with any player. Your most expensive product, your premium product. It's like going to a store. You're like, I'm buying my wife a ring. You're like, okay, what ring? Look, the most expensive. Like, I made money this year. A most expensive one. And they're like, this is beautiful. And inside there's a diamond. Like, that's a gorgeous diamond. Like, it's actually a cubic zirconium. That's the equivalent. It's it's a joke. It doesn't even make sense. I mean, interesting comparison. It definitely is. And I mean, when, when Fanatics is in charge and we get Frism, all will be right with the world. You know I'm waiting for it. There needs to be competition, frankly. It's I'm with you. Simple. I'm with you. And I, I mean, listen, it's it's amazing when there are, you know, businesses out there 
that have no competition, no close second, and they still deliver every single day. And I should praise you for doing that. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Slapstick humor. <laughs> um, no, so but it's like uh, Char- Charlie Munger says, or, or Warren Buffett, um, show me the incentives and I'll show you the outcome. If you have no incentive to be better than anybody or even better than yourself, because you know if you sold cubic zirconian or diamond, you, well, you'd be like, well, my incentive is to cut costs. Yep. It's expensive to get in-person autos, so I'm going to do a sticker. It's expensive to use game-worn shit, so I'm just going to use Target, like the store. I hear you. I mean, listen, this is we're, – we're seeing it, right? I mean, I was able to buy a, a cool box – of select 2020 hybrid UFC for not a killer price this week. People were able to buy, you know, the, e, e, some of the complaints we had, can you grade cards inexpensively? Can you buy wax? Like the market is coming back to the consumer, right? Yeah. It, you know, that competition helps with that. You know what I mean? And, and when I hear an announcement of a grading company, whether it's CSG, SGC, PSA doing their July, you know, uh, national special, all these things, it's all a good thing for us, right? When they were closed and, you know, and there were no ways to get cards in, that's not good. You know what I mean? We're the consumer wins when these guys are all kind of playing off of one another. And I love the innovation, right? I mean, I love their auction houses, right? Has, has any auction house ever before tried a, we're going to partner with a grading company. You just hand the card off. And the next thing you know, there's going to be money coming in for you. Right, it's getting graded and sold automatically. One fell swoop. That's a cool thing. It's a step. In, I I would imagine that if it's successful, you'll see other auction houses doing the same type of thing and maybe adding in another layer of interesting stuff. What do you got there? Rookie stained glass. Cool card. Innovation. You got me thinking. I was look at you this know, design in 2013 cage. Yeah, this is when first they took over. Right, 20, 2012, 2012 was when they released Prism. Yeah, 2013. 2012. This is what it used to look like when they were competing a little bit with Topps Chrome. You yeah. have to come out and make some cool stuff. Look at that. Now, that's a cool looking card. Now, do me a favor. Type in Topps Gallery. Uh, 1999. You talked about this when we used to give plays, right? Gallery of Heroes? Yeah. There you go. Very similar. This one's die cut, of course, but I mean, a pretty similar looking stained glass type of card. Doesn't take much to innovate when almost all of it's already been done. <laughs> Don't innovate, the companies. I am that guy. It's interesting to call a product innovation when it's basically a ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Prism and Prism was and Crusade was Leaf. Listen, why? Oh, by, by the way, you're speaking with Panini on Saturday why? about innovation, right? <laughs> why? You won't open with that. You won't open with that. I won't open you with won't. that. No. Do you remember we used to do that in high school? Like when you won't do it. You, you won't do that. that. You won't do that. You won't, you won't do that. You won't yeah, go because... knock on Nancy's door and run away. Who are you, you McFly? Think kids know about... oh, were you Chicken McFly? I just said the line totally wrong. What are you, a Chicken <laughs> McFly? McFly you chicken. A chicken. Chicken. And Ian's almost done with the DeLorean from. Uh, from the the Lego DeLorean from Back to the Future. I'm going to have a sick Lego movie collection when I finally get a studio one day and, and I do my basement, you know, before I'm dead. I got the McAllister house from Home Alone. I got Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters. Now I'm going to have this. He's got some sick stuff. I got the Death Star. It's going to be a nice little Lego studio. It's going to be a good time. What would you Lego, punish, man? Ian? I Never. love Legos. Never. Why would, would I ever? No, no, if you adult? played Ding Dong Ditch. It depends who he's doing it to and whether the person deserves it. Like if it's somebody on the block that's like a pain in the butt and was always like, get off the lawn. Get off my lawn, you bum kids. Like if it was that person, go ahead, have at it. But if it's, you know, somebody we like or, you know, some, like, you know, I, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to mess with. Why would you ask? Were you punished for doing Ding Dong Ditch as a kid? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, what an interesting turn. We go from building Lego to... Well, punch. we used to steal cronies, too, like those little like metal ones off the cars. Like BMWs would have really nice ones. We'd take them and then run. What would you do with kids? It? Nothing. It was stupid. Just ruin someone's day for no financial value. Now their tires can't hold air. So, on some fun stuff. We have love Legos. a full... Guest list confirmed for our cigar night. 
cheers to all of you guys. I even got a fun message yesterday from somebody RCPing saying, I think I was one of the three delinquents you were about to call out. <laughs> people listen. People listen. You got to be careful. You don't want me to call you out. So we got that fun stuff. What Can I, I be real? Yeah, please. I don't please. think people are ready. Like, I think they see us and they're like, okay, this party's going to be sick. But, like, this party's going to be sick. It's going to be sick. Sick. Like, such a virus, you're going to have to wear a mask. It's going to be that sick. <laughs> so, I'll tell you. Yeah, we're trying to do the right thing uh, for this party. And, you know, we hope that you guys enjoy um, you know, your time there. I got to tell you, man, now that it's a week away, I'm really excited for National. I really am. I, I saw, uh, you know, like, um, what do you call it? Like a, a diagram of the layout and just how many people, like how many tables and how many things are going to be there. I'm looking forward to that, right? I'm looking forward to – I'm not looking forward to Hobby Beef. I'll tell you that much. I, I get the I get the impression there's going to be, like, Hobby Beef there. Like, it's going to be – but then, you know, yeah. It gives I mean, you that impression. Yeah, I got to tell Instagram. you. Instagram. The, the best thing about the What Not Show is – so the whatnot show every day is 5 to 6 p.m. But it takes like an hour, two hours to load everything up and another two hours to ship everything. So as a result, one of like the unexpected benefits is I'm on Instagram less. So I'm in the drama less and I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea. Like I, I don't even have time or energy for Instagram because I'm so big, busy at UPS and USPS packaging. Tell me, catch me up. Who hates who? I think everybody – listen, when the market's bad, people just don't like people. But here, I'll give you one specific. I'm interested to see how people behave towards backyard breaks live. Because there are – shit. There, and that might be – what, what do you think they're going to do? Like come up to people like, you're with backyard. F- fuck you. Like no one's going to do that. Everybody's quick in the comments to do it. Like why is it these guys pulling in good cards? But I have a feeling that's probably not going to happen. Like they say in Lethal Weapon, right? Telephone tough guy. People are telephone tough guys. Not so, going to happen at all. They're, so I'm they're just going to realize they're normal dudes that are young. And everyone's going to remember, that's how I acted when I was young. Will <laughs> they be breaking their midriff? Though? Like, are they going to be like, you know, are they going to have like the whole get up? Is it going to be like full on backyard personas at national? Because that will be an interesting contrast to some of the people who've been there for decades with their binders. I don't think that's everyone's persona. I think they have like close to 10 people. They added this girl backyard, Sarah. They added our boy Mike from Flushing. So everyone, I think what they do is they have a few, they have different personalities. And I think when you see them all together, you're like, okay, this makes a lot of sense. It's the barstool vibe. It, it, it genuinely is the Barstool vibe, but for the hobby. Did Barstool, in a lot of ways, pioneered new media. Draymond Green is singing from the rooftops about this new media, new media, new media. Well, who paved the way to be themselves? Barstool. With like a bit of that like slapstick frat party humor. So I think, I think having – as long as you're doing things ethical – Having a few haters isn't the end of the world. I think it's healthy. I wouldn't know. No one hates me. It's kind of the way it works, you know? No, there are plenty of people who hate me. You should see some of those messages. No, but, I mean, listen. So, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to walking. I'm looking forward to meeting people. I'm looking forward to shaking hands. I'm looking forward to giving stuff away. I'm looking forward to seeing cards, you know? And just, like, the National is – it's energy. I'm looking forward to the energy of the National, right? And And – you know, it's it's fun that it coincides with the end of what's typically thought of as like a slow period for the hobby. You know, June and July are sort of like this slow time. And I wonder, like I say, chicken or the egg, right? Does it come out of that doldrum because of the national? <clears throat> or is the national just kind of like a cherry on top? We were coming out of it anyway because of the, the, the seasons of sport. You know, baseball is going to start to heat up. Football is going to start. We're going to have some legit basketball rumors and, you know, the whole nine yards. You know, hockey will be all around the corner. You know, like sports start to ramp up. People start to buy in anticipation of, 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 of sports happening again in the fall. Is that, is that part of it? And just the national just happens to coincide with that? Or do people go to the national 
lead up to the national and people start to really take another look at the hobby. I don't know what the answer is, but whatever it is, the national usually is a kickoff of, of, of a better season for the hobby. So you and I had a disagreement on this. We, we do. We disagree often. Remember I said, I think of myself as a professional athlete. Yes. And you laughed and you thought, Andrew, another one of your moronic things I might not even respond to this one because it's so stupid, but right. That's that, that I captured that response. hundred percent. But it's, it might not have even been hard periods. enough on you. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of these slow periods that I think of myself as a professional athlete. And what I mean by that is 99% of people are like a slow period. I'm going to sit and write, wait, sit on my hands and twiddle my thumbs. And they're reactive. Let something external happen for me to change internal. Versus what professional athletes think about is how do I use this period to train, prepare, put in the longer hours so that when that next period of time comes, I'm proactive, I'm ready. Because reality, we don't know if it's August, September, or next July, or 2024. In reality, if we had a magic ball, we would know. I agree with you. There is seasonality that you could predict. I believe August is that. Uh, sell in May, go away, you know, that whole stuff. But I, I think if you focus on, oh, this period of time, most people are on vacation, you know, relaxing, laying by the beach, getting tan, whatever. I could use it this to, to earn catch up maybe, right? Get ahead. Maybe. Separation season. Think like an athlete. All right. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, iron sharpens iron, right? We, we, you know, we, I'm telling uh, you guys this. I laid on my ass all week. <laughs> well, I mean, you're eating cereal and watching movies. But, no, but, well, listen, you can lay on your ass. Still putting still, on two shows a day. Well, that's where I was going, right? I mean, lay on your ass is a, is a subjective thing. You're, you're still doing a whatnot show every day. You're still doing this content every day. You're still answering messages. We're still putting on stuff for the national, getting prepared. You're still buying stuff in all the auctions. I would say that you're probably more in tune with the hobby now, even though you're not on Instagram as much than you have been since I've known you. Um, you know, hey, look at this. There's more of this person in the upcoming auction than there was last time around. This is a trend that I'm noticing, right? A couple weeks ago, there were a lot. Then all of a sudden, a little. A couple weeks ago, there were a little of this guy. Now there's more and more. I'm noticing a trend. I'm acting on the trend. Like That's the kind of stuff that, you know, you kind of have to be in the weeds to see because you know you're you're talking about multi-week trends of cards and pricing and the whole deal um so it sounds ridiculous but i'm gonna ask it anyway i may have asked you this you might have chickened out of it anyway i need three names oh this is good Fuck, i had this names list too. Of Guys, the player Cage was talking about real quick is No, Curry. no, you don't have to. Yeah, Curry, I, okay. I, I can't. I can't. I love them so much that even if it hurts my bottom line, I got. So last week's auction, guess how many Currys are in this week's auction real quick, Cage? Mm, 40. 14. Wow. Yeah. And this is with Flash, meaning how many uh, have been flashed in with Wednesday. From last week's auction, there was 329 curries. 329 curries closed last auction. There's, what did I say, 14? In 14. just this week's auction. Uh, something to think about that. What? A lot of people listed after the championship, the whole deal, and that that is now running its course. So curry stuff is no longer as plentiful, and you see a price start to tick up. That that, that There it is. Uh, names, I apologize for cutting you off. Names for the national. So it doesn't have to be somebody you're looking to meet or somebody you plan to meet, somebody you might want to see on the main stage, somebody whose table you want to stop by. Um, oh, you know, somebody you're going this route. I, I don't care about anybody. I thought you meant players. Give people three do, players to buy. You can do players after. Forget about that. I'm talking about the national. And then we'll give you, you, want, you want to give three um, players names? to buy? That's fine too. Names. You give me three players. I'll give you three people at the national I'm looking forward to. Okay. Is that easier for you? And then I'll we'll we'll, we'll let you go and you go listen to Sade some more. <laughs> 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 Guys, go to Jay Williams. It's it was, it was a few posts back. It's actually kind of funny. Um, all you guys out there created content, all that stuff. Maybe you try. Maybe you enunciate better. Um, three names. Try this. Ready, I, I got it. I gotta tell you, man. 
Anthony Edwards, I still I'm a big believer in him. I'm a big believer in Anthony Edwards. I think I think he's gonna be very, very good. I think he's gonna have a good year and a very good start to the year. Uh so that's one. I want a Giannis rookie auto. On card rookie auto with Giannis. I, I, I love his story. I've loved the story for a long time. Edwards rookie today on whatnot. Sold well, little, fifty bucks, right? Little Edwards out of ninety nine. Cool card. Brady. Brady, I was thinking about it today. So so what we do with the hobby, like we talk about documentaries and how they solidify or you know increase prices. What I think a good documentary does is it adds to a collector base. It tells a story, and if someone watching it on the other end gets some kind of feeling with that story, they're like, I believe in this guy. You add collectors, long-term collectors. And Giannis is an immigrant. You know, he taps into that immigrant struggling. Immigrants are typically very close with family. He's like, no, I won't leave if my family can't come. Brady, you know who he reminds me of? He's the all-American guy. He's mantle. In 50 years, where I see Brady is I see a mantle. And All right. I want it's some very Brady fair. cards. Very fair. Very, very fair. So, the three people I'm looking forward to at the National, and I'll let you comment on the third one. Well, you comment on all of them if you like, but the third one I'm going to lead you with. The three people I'm looking forward to seeing at the National, and maybe I'll see them, maybe I won't. Number one is Gary V. He's coming to the National, and he wasn't at the last one. And even though he wasn't at the last one, he was the talk of it because he was buying, you know, CryptoPunks while that was starting to run. But the national before that, I was not. Thank at. you for the tip on Panini Digital, man. Instead of you're welcome. You're welcome. So, so, um, Sherman buying Anthony Edwards. Every Edwards or, I bought is or, up. Or, or little orphans. Or little orphans. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you stay away from. You scum, made so. me richer. And my water stream since I've met you. Don't, so, don't. Hey, so Gary V, I missed the national he was at, and it, you know, I remember being at on Instagram and like seeing, you know, kind of the posts and stuff, and just it, it, it appeared to be a, a different energy that Gary V brings to the national. Um, he's a, you know, obviously a polarizing figure in the hobby. Um, I'd be interested to see, you know, his reception from folks. I don't think he cares. Um, but that's just, it's an interesting kind of dynamic, right? Um, so I'd like to see him. I'd like to see, you know, the reception, and, you know, that he gets and, uh, and the like. Um, here's a clippable moment. I want to see Darren Rovell. And here's why. I had one interaction with Darren Rovell at the National last year. And he was busy, you know, and, you know, he was, you know, kind of not, 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 not the most happy person in the world. And... I kind of want to do like a, a redo of that, right? Because that's the impression that I left. That, you know, we talked about this with, um, you know, like people come and they see, um, you know, Joe DiMaggio play and, or Mickey Mantle. And they say, well, I got to be my best because you never know if, if some kid who saved up their money and, you know, uh, you know, th that's the only time they're going to come see a game. I can't be off that day, right? So, I mean, Darren Ravel, yeah, you're not DiMaggio or Mantle. Yeah. But, I, but he's I Rodman. To, I have to give a pass, right? Because look, that's his thing. That's his shtick, though. Gage. Well, partially, but you are the one who said, you know, these guys they work, they they have a table, you know, it's a pain in the ass, the dealers to get there and all that stuff, right? So I want to start though because some of his takes recently have been good. You know, this. I mean, I like following him on Twitter. You know, this. You know, this cool information that he puts out there about betting, about the national, about home run derby. You know, like the not counting the home run. Like, there's just there's, a, there's been some interesting takes from him. He's been a lot, a little less negative on certain things, a little more positive on certain things. I like to say it's hello. A it's, so we all have a shtick, right? So anyway, that's he's a, a he's a you know he's this guy. Maybe. I mean, I've never really gotten a – I saw him at Mint Collective for like two minutes. He had an awesome Chicago Bulls throwback jacket on, you know, very attention-grabbing. It was pretty cool. I saw him for, uh, you know, two seconds. But three Gary, is – Darren Ravel. Three is – I want to see the alt guys. I want to see Lior and I want to see Lefko, mostly because I want to make sure they're alive. Um, that is something I want you to comment on because you were a believer – in alt and oh, i'd like you, i'd you. like to talk to them um and see what it is that they're doing because some of the content looks cool 
but I don't really understand it. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't know whether, you know, they're trying to bring the hobby into the future with like an NFT. So I, I, you know, I, I don't really know what the deal is. So I would love right, to, look, let me touch on this. So there's, there's three parts to this and I'm, I'm a, I love the people at all. You're, you're hundred yeah, percent right. Of course. Um, AG, who's the head of marketing found the job. I listened to our show, which was like, that's like the, she's awesome. that's, that's crazy to me. Uh, so first thing, 1% withdrawals uh, on cards taking out of the vault. PWCC does that anyway, but on the front end. So like if you buy something on the weekly, there's a, a 1%, um, I don't know what it's called, f- fee to add the cards in from weekly. Archival. To the vault. Archival. Archival. Thank you. Fee. And so they have, cool. a, they have got, a fulfillment. It's a 1% fulfillment. You got to make your money. I'm cool and Evolve that. so has that's, that too. By the way, Golden yep. charged me that to take stuff out of their vault also. Yeah, so I'm actually cool with that. I asked their audience what they thought, uh, but it's okay. You got to make money, and people have a weird mis- misconception of money. Um, you want businesses to make money because if they make money, they can hire better talent, and in theory, add more value. So they did that. They now you can bid on auctions, ending tomorrow night liquid auction, without depositing money. That's actually a huge value add. That's a criticism that people had yep. uh, that they changed. Here's the third perception reality. Sometimes when businesses do too many things at once, they might think internally it's freaking awesome. And it, it is, but it's also depends on how you message it out, right? So when businesses do too much, sometimes the consumer gets confused and they don't get to see all the amazing things you're doing to add value. And on the other end, they're just like, what's wait, minting cards and Lefko had a card and he put it up and now it's minted and what does that mean? And they missed the whole thing with, hey, you can now bid on auctions without right. depositing money, which is a big value add. And that, but that's a very different part of their business model. Is exactly what you're saying. Like, like I saw the post from Lefko. It's like cool, everyone loves cracked ice, but I didn't know what was being posted. It was like right. a reveal of a cracked. But, but, but what is it? Like I didn't. I, it, and I'm not an idiot, right? But I also wasn't going to spend the time it probably needed for me to figure it out because I, I'm a, I would love for someone to explain it to me. Cracked ice right. is nice, but what is the cracked ice? Like, wh- what's going on? The thing is, stealth is kind of a lot of startups in the Silicon Valley are like, we're, we're raising money, but I can't even tell you what we're doing. It's like it's in crypto, but it's stealth. They love that stuff. Like, you have to sign an NDA before revealing it. It's actually a form of marketing, right? It taps into curiosity. It's like, what the fuck is going on type of vibe. Yep. I've never found that that's the best way because if on the other side of what's going on isn't incredibly amazing, the consumer is left like, okay, you made me kind of jump through all these hoops and it didn't benefit me and they remember that. So yeah. I, I very much like promise over deliver, move forward. Promise over deliver, move forward. Promise over deliver, move forward. I found that that's a better model, but dude, there's millions of ways to market and let people find out. I think, yeah. So I'm dude, to with that. the Gary thing, yeah. I think we overthink haters. Like I think our brains are used to finding problems and not even just problems. It's like a problem and then what if happens, right? So like what we think is when we have haters, that's going to impact us negatively. So it's not the hater. It's what happens when this person doesn't like us or it's going to affect their bottom line or our podcast won't be liked. But in reality, they don't matter. Like it's not real life. Like I've said that before. I don't know how to maybe verbalize it. Well, it doesn't really happen in real life. Like I think in real life, you have much more nuanced conversations uh, and like, Hey, I, I saw what you did here. It, I didn't feel right about it here. And then the other person, you know? Yeah. That'll be interesting. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to, uh, I mean, listen, it's Atlantic City is Atlantic City, so that's you know interesting in of itself. But I'm looking forward to going. Look, definitely looking forward to cigar night. It's going to be a blast. Um, and uh, I guess the only message I'll leave for the folks who didn't make cigar night and still going to national, or maybe they're not going there on Wednesday, I'll have another cigar night for you guys at some point in time. There's dinners, there's events, there's every night. You know, we'll meet uh, you know at a hotel and a boardwalk. Which I'm at. What he Island. means, he he's, he's so excited. He's so excited to I see am. you guys. You have no idea. I am. I really We're am. Gonna do. So, it's never a good feeling to have people left out, right? It's the reality of life, but it's never a good feeling. So, what Cage did was buy more cigars than 
humanly imaginable. And we're going to do another like little pop up before another event. More than likely, Friday or Saturday is what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Kind of on the beach, impromptu, nothing crazy, just get together as a crew. It might be before another event so we could kind of roll in squad deep mm -hmm. to the other event. That's always yep. the best. Like, hey, Luca Nation in the house. You kind of walk in, bump shoulders. Oh, backyard. See you there? Better not step on my turf type of stuff. It could roll into that. You're going to be blasting. Give me a blast and shot, Dag. Save. Save. It's that. Uh, no. So, so or, just, and then just so that the, the, joke the episode everybody. continues, right? You know it's shot, Dag, right? Oh, no. Okay. It just says save. S A D. Yeah, it's pronounced shot, Dag. I was hoping this was a joke the entire episode. <laughs> I don't know how anyone would ever know that. Like, it's not like. Oh, this YouTube video is by Sade. No, just a say it in ordinary life. And I read it how I was taught in six. We will be doing grade. a pop up, and Why Andrew is going to be singing No Ordinary Love for all of you on the boardwalk. He's going to serenade you guys. He will warm up first with his Jay Williams technique, <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to have a blast. But, guys, listen, I, 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 the thing I'm looking forward to most is I want to come back from Atlantic City and not have a single message. That says, I saw you, but I, I didn't get a chance to, you know, get a minute with you. I don't want a single one of those. Like, I don't even care if I get to the show. We're, go we're all going to hang out. We're going to smoke cigars. I want to leave with no that's going to happen. I'm I mean, bringing we, we like all have limited 700 time. cigars with me, and I want to leave with none. So It's going to happen. It's impossible. But it's – I'm trying, shoot you know. For, I mean, shoot for the fine. stars. If you fail, at least you land amongst the homes. I have one last question for you. What should I eat for dinner tonight? I haven't eaten. I'm hungry. Wow, this is tough. You're really <laughs> contemplating this. It could be just like pizza or something. Nice and easy. No, I don't, don't have pizza. Um, are you going to order? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm not turning the stove on, man. It's hot. It's like 112 degrees here in the shake. shake shack. Ooh, the kids would probably like that too. Good call. Good call. Thank you. I know Thank I you. keep you around for a reason. Everybody, that's Thank another you. episode. This was a fun one. Yesterday was one of my favorites. So you're gonna wait, you're gonna love tomorrow. Oh, we have a double header tomorrow. I didn't tell you. I didn't put really? it on the calendar. Well, nice. Yeah. So let me guess. You have a guest schedule for me. Hmm, maybe tomorrow is Shyway two guests. Yeah. How, you stop looking at my DMs, bro. You, you just no. go to Luca Tiger Lebron to see the explore page. I just spoke with him. I just spoke with him. That was why I was a couple minutes late for the episode. Oh. I, was on, I was on the phone with him. Cheers. By the way, guys, I've been doing a little experiment and I, I hit the not interested button on all of my reels. They're back. Addison Ray, Charlie DeMio, all of them. They're never leaving my explore feed. It's shocking. That's another oh. episode. Any final words? No. I, I want you to start doing those dances. If you can't beat them, join them. So you should do your best Addison Ray. Actually, you know what? Let me see one right now. Show me no. the most recent. Well, first, what, what's the, what's, dude, give me a little like little dance move. I'm the most I try to TikTok figure out friend. why. I want to figure out why they're always on my feed. But more than that, I want Swarm. to figure out why I can't stop watching them. That's because why you continue to get them on your feed, you weirdo. But it's just it, – it's weird, man, because it's annoying, but it's like I can't look away. It's like – it's like does that make sense? It's like yes, a, a, it's a, a car crash. It's, it's, You're like, the, it's the mayhem commercial, the insurance guy. You know, I'm the most recent TikTok trend, and boom, you can't look away. It's a hundred oh, – I get it. But here's the thing, man, and I'll, I'll just put it in, in, in terms you can understand. It's like asking why when we were both on the Luca Tiger LeBron account together and you were in Cancun. And the only people who came up and pictures that came up were Ukrainian women who happened to be in Cancun. And then you come on here and like, I have no idea why that would pop up on our account. Of course you know why. And you know why Addison Ray, is that her name? Addison Ray and Ch Charlie D'Amelio, not Dixie. No Dixie D'Amelio action, just Charlie. Okay. So, Very awkward. So Very awkward. They, you know just... why they're, you know why they're popping up? Because you when you just keep watching them. Stop watching. But then I go and then I go, not interested. Not interested. 
not interested. And then it's like a derivative version and then they're back. That's another episode <laughs> of Luca Nation.